Robot lawnmowers have come a long way since I bought my first one almost six years ago. And while my 315X has done a pretty good job of making it so I don't have to spend hours every week cutting the grass, I've finally gotten tired of having to fix my boundary wire. Luckily, Husqvarna just released their latest platform, the IQ series, and I managed to get one ordered. The IQ series features Husqvarna's take on boundary wire free mowing using what they call EPOS, or Exact Positioning Operating System. This utilizes a reference station to help the automower navigate the lawn without the need of burying a wire underground. Unlike all the other robot lawnmower videos that are popping up on YouTube, this video isn't sponsored by anyone. And you know I didn't get it for free to review either, because I always make sure to disclose my videos when I receive something to take a look at, even though that never has any impact on what I share in my videos. Which is probably why no one wants to send me a robot lawnmower to review. And with that, I think we have a great segue into talking about price. These things aren't cheap. With the smallest model coming in at 3000 USD, the biggest difference between the 410, 420, and 440 IQ is the amount of lawn coverage they support. There is also a 435 IQ AWD, which is the most expensive option out of the IQ series. But its biggest selling point is that it has all-wheel drive, which lets it take on hills that have an incline up to 70%. While a newer feature for robot lawnmowers, Husqvarna isn't the first to have wire-free boundaries. EPOS utilizes RTK, or real-time, kinematic positioning which is meant to provide centimeter level accuracy that other robot lawnmowers use as well. With RTK, you need a fixed location base station that has a clear view of the sky to receive signals from satellites floating overhead, allowing for it to calculate its position with great accuracy. The mobile device or rover also needs to be able to receive signals from the same satellites as the base station. It then uses those satellites and correction data from the base station to calculate its position. For the automower, the base station will be the EPOS reference station, and the automower itself is the rover. Unlike robot lawnmowers that use cameras to navigate, the Automower IQ series is able to cut the grass any time of the day, no matter how much or how little sunlight there is. With EPOS, you set up virtual boundaries by driving the lawnmower around, placing waypoints to map out the yard. The mower then utilizes the reference station and its own satellite data to navigate the map to cut the grass. Virtual boundaries allow you to set up different work areas that have their own unique set of settings, such as cutting height, cutting pattern, and schedule. For the IQ series, not only are you able to set up virtual boundaries, but you can also utilize boundary wires as well, which I don't think I've seen from any other robot lawnmower manufacturer. This can be helpful if you have areas of your yard that have poor satellite coverage. The 410, 420, and 440 models all support cutting heights of 1 inch up to 4 inches, which is electronically adjustable, while the 435 all-wheel drive can cut grass as low as 1.2 inches up to 2.8 inches high. This is nice. As for the three main models, you don't have to worry about ordering a special model if you need to cut your grass higher. The three non-all-wheel drive models have a 9.4 inch cutting width, while the 435 all-wheel drive has a cutting width of 8.7 inches. They also feature very large rear drive wheels and large front caster wheels that help the mower get over almost any terrain. I don't have any crazy hills in my yard, but the auto mower is able to go up and down the slight slope I have around my pool without any problems. It's also able to navigate on and off the lawn to go over the driveway and sidewalk with ease. I know some people might have rock mulch around their yard, so I tested out driving the auto mower over the stoned area I have near my pool equipment, and it showed no issues at all. I also snuck to a nearby hill and tested driving the auto mower 410 up and down it, and it handled things pretty well. I didn't actually try cutting the grass since it wasn't mine, but I managed driving up and down the hill with no problem. All four IQ models support Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and cellular connectivity for settings configuration and monitoring of the robot. Unlike other brands that have cellular built in, or for brands that you have to buy a separate module for, there's no extra cost to utilize it. The cell service for your lawnmower is just part of the price, which I appreciate. This was the case for my 315X as well, and it's still able to be connected to over cellular six years later. All models have a 2.8 inch color screen, which can be used for basic setting configuration and mower control. Just like previous models, the IQ series has GPS theft tracking, a built-in alarm with pin code protection, a tilt, and lift sensor. The auto mowers are really quiet. I can't even hear mine cutting the grass over my neighbor's air conditioning running. This means you can have it cutting the lawn at night when no one is using the lawn without it being too disturbing. The Husqvarna automowers can be integrated into your smart home through voice assistants, such as Google Home, or the Amazon Voice Assistant. 
And you can even add it into Home Assistant with a built-in integration, which I'll be talking about a little more later in this video. The IQ series also has object avoidance, which seemed to work fine in my testing. It won't detect tiny things like golf balls in the grass, but even a child boot was avoided pretty easily. Taking a look at the 410 IQ when it was delivered, the box is very bulky and pretty heavy, so something to keep in mind if you have mobility issues. I personally wish I had someone help me lug it into the backyard, that's for sure. The 410 IQ weighs just under 40 pounds. Opening up the mower, you'll be greeted with a getting started manual and cardboard cover with some helpful information on it. You'll also have several different boxes with different parts in them. My first impressions of the 410 IQ is that it's much larger compared to older models. I know I had a bit of an older model, but just how much larger the 410 IQ is compared to the 315X is staggering. I was hoping to eventually install a robot door in my fence, but with the size of the 410, that is never happening now. Among all of the accessory boxes, you'll find the EPOS reference station, its power source, and a mounting bracket for it, a power supply for the charging station, 100 wire stakes, extra blades and screws, a security warning sticker, base station anchors, several manuals, the top of the charging station, the charging station base, and of course, the mower itself. Take note that the IQ series does not include boundary wire. So if you plan on using boundary wire, you'll need to purchase it separately. I recommend making sure to keep your EPOS station power cable and base station power cable separate. If you lose track of which is which, the base station cable is labeled with a picture of the charging station on a sticker, and the other side of the sticker has the EPOS station crossed off. Overall, setup isn't too difficult as long as you follow the steps required. In this video, I'll be going over setting everything up at a high level, but if you'd like to see the installation process in greater detail, let me know in the comments below. The first thing you'll want to do with getting the lawnmower set up is installing the charging base. The top part of the base station does ship separately, so you'll have to attach it. For initial setup, I recommend only using two of the included base station stakes, just in case you find out you need to move it. Just don't forget to use the rest of them once you determine its actual location. The power cable for the charging station is pretty long, so you don't need an outlet right where it's going to be, but you will need an outlet nearby. If you know you'll be using boundary wire and it's not installed already, you'll want to do that next. Boundary wire is really outside the scope of this video, so I won't be talking about it anymore. But know that you can use both EPOS and boundary wire for locations that don't have enough satellite coverage. With the charging station set up, you can put the lawnmower on it so it can start charging while you finish the rest of the setup. The EPOS reference station needs to be out in an area near your home that has a clear, unobstructed view of the sky. This can be mounted to the side of your house if high enough, or possibly on a pole in your yard. You'll know it has a satellite lock once the light on it turns solid green after being plugged into power. This lets you temporarily set the reference station to make sure it's going to work before permanently installing it. While you can temporarily set up the reference station, keep in mind that moving it will mean you have to reteach your working areas. So if you aren't dead set on where you think you want the reference station, you'll want to consider not mapping out your whole yard just yet. For my installation, I bought the EPOS mounting bracket kit that lets the reference station be mounted further away from the house. At $28 USD, it's actually a pretty decent deal when comparing to similar options online. Just keep in mind that if you do go this route, you do have to provide your own way for the reference station to attach to the pole of the mounting kit. I picked up adjustable clamps that have worked well so far. One thing I've seen mentioned for other robot lawnmowers that use RTK is putting the RTK reference station in the attic. I was kind of curious if this would work with the 410 IQ. So I strapped it to the rafter in my attic, and sure enough, I was able to get satellite lock with the reference station in the attic. I further tested the mower, which worked as expected. A few considerations to keep in mind if you plan on going the attic installation route. The temperature of your attic. Attics by nature get hot, and heat is not great for electronics. So make sure you have a good understanding of how warm your attic gets because the reference station has a listed operating temperature of 113 degrees Fahrenheit. Power for the reference station. Pretty self-explanatory, but easily overlooked. I had to run an extension cord to test out the reference station, which I would recommend doing before actually mounting or having an electrical run for it if you decide to go this path. The type of roof you have will also impact your reference station's ability to get satellite lock. A metal roof, for example, has a pretty good chance of rendering the reference station useless. Or having multiple layers of shingles could degrade signal coverage enough that on cloudy days you could see issues. Likewise, the type of siding your house has could impact the ability for the automower to communicate with the reference station, and is something else you should keep in mind. Solar panels on your roof will also most likely interfere with the reference station as well, so make sure not to mount it directly under any of them. Also, if you reach out to support because of issues with the EPOS system, they will most likely tell you to get it out of the attic. 
If you're running or we're running your RTK reference station in the attic, I'd love to hear about your experiences with that in the comments below. With the base station, EPOS reference station, and boundary wire, if you're going to be using it installed, it's time to set up the lawnmower itself. To do this, you'll need the automower app installed on your phone. The setup process through the automower app is pretty straightforward. You'll select the mower you're trying to add, and then you'll be walked through several steps. You'll first have to pair the automower to your phone over Bluetooth, so make sure you're nearby for this part. Through the setup process, you also pair the charging station and EPOS reference station over Bluetooth to sync everything together. As part of the setup, you'll need to set the docking point. This is used when the mower first starts, in which it will back up out of the charging dock to the set distance to attempt to get a satellite lock. Because of this, you'll want to make sure that the docking point provides a clear view of the sky for the automower. Once you're done getting everything paired together, it's time to set your virtual boundaries. For the automower virtual boundaries, you can set up multiple work areas with each work area having a different cutting height, cutting pattern, and schedule. To actually set up a work area, you'll need to use your phone to drive the automower around your yard clockwise, placing waypoints every few feet. Depending on the size and complexity of your lawn, this can take a bit of time. I also recommend maybe practicing driving around the automower a bit to get a feel for controls. I found after making the same work areas multiple times to make this video, I was able to place waypoints more efficiently. After a work area is created, you can assign it to its own cutting schedule, cutting pattern, and cutting height. With your work area or areas created, you'll next want to add stay out zones. These areas are to let the mower know where it shouldn't go to cut grass. It can help limit the amount of collisions the mower experiences, as well as the amount of time needed to cut the grass. This would be good for around larger trees, pools, or other larger objects that are permanent in the middle of a work area. For these mappings, you'll actually drive the automower around the area in a counterclockwise direction. A work area can have several stay-out zones, and I'm not sure if there is an upper limit for how many you can have set to a specific work area or for the automower itself, but I have four total with three being in one work area. Transport paths are what the automower uses to get back to the charging station if the working area it currently is in does not directly overlap the charging station. Take note that the mower does not utilize multiple work areas to get back to the charging station even if they overlap. Instead, each work area is its own isolated area. It requires a transport path if it does not directly overlap with the charging station. To set up transport paths, you'll first want the automower in the work area you want to navigate from, and you'll drive it back to the charging station, placing waypoints every so often just like work areas and stay out zones. Transport paths, and especially transport path waypoints, should not intersect work area waypoints, as it can cause map errors. For example, this is how I originally had a transport path set up, and it caused the mower to not be able to mow the area. Once I corrected the transport path to not intersect any waypoints, the issue went away. Once a transport path is created, you can set the allowed width the automower will travel around the transport path. The wider the width, the less wear you'll see on the lawn. But if you need to go through a gate or tight passage, you'll need a smaller width. It would be nice if you could adjust the width of a transport path for just specific sections, and is something that can be hopefully added in a future update. A quick tech tip. If you are having issues with driving the mower around from your phone, you can actually use a Bluetooth controller such as an Xbox controller to steer the auto mower and place waypoints. First, you'll need to have the controller paired to your phone. Then you can go in and create your work area, stay out zone, or transport paths using the controller. Just keep in mind, you will need to keep the phone nearby the automower still for this process to work. With your yard mapped out, you can make adjustments as needed including nudging the overlay of the map over. This does not impact anything outside of seeing the working areas and transport paths as you desire within the app. Adding your automower to your smart home is something I strongly recommend if you're able to. With having it added to a voice assistant, you're able to send out the automower to cut the grass or even specific work areas without having to lift your phone. With being added in to my Home Assistant Smart Home Hub through the native integration, I'm able to see useful information about my automower and even have automation set up with it. For example, if my weather station detects lightning moving closer to my home, I can have the automower park until the storm passes. There are a few interesting things I learned so far about the automower that I think you might find useful. When mowing the lawn, the automower mows the perimeter before doing the rest of the working area. During my testing, I stopped the mower in the middle of a cutting session and the next day when I manually started it, the automower went back to where it stopped and finished cutting the working area. For a cutting pattern change to take effect, the previous cutting mission must be completed. 
You can bypass this by making a slight change to the map, such as moving a waypoint, and then starting a new cutting mission. Once a work area is cut, the auto mower will not go back to the same work area until the following scheduled day, even if there is plenty of time left in that day. This can be overcome by manually starting a mow mission for the specific work area. Only one cutting mission will be completed per scheduled time for each working area. On the next scheduled visit to that work area, the mower will do the next mission. The triangle pattern has three missions. For patterns like checkerboard, there are two missions, and parallel only has one mission. A single cutting mission will fully cut the grass. It's just if you want the extra lines, you would have to run multiple missions. To help those who might be wondering how long it takes for a robot lawn mower to cut the grass, I track the time it took to cut the different sections of my yard. Keep in mind that the complexity and pattern will impact timing, and the times I'm about to give are for a single cutting mission. For the times I'm about to give, I tracked three different mowing missions for each section, and then averaged them out. For my side yard, which the auto mower app has it measuring at 1,146 square feet, it takes roughly 50 minutes and is completed on a single charge. For my front yard, which is measuring at 2,697 square feet, it takes about 1 hour and 30 minutes to cut, and it is also completed on a single charge without issues. For my backyard, which is showing as 0.21 acres, it takes about 8 hours to fully cut. This includes charging twice, with each charge taking between 1.5 and, and 2 hours. This means I can easily have my whole yard cut in about 14 hours. Instead, I have the different yard sections broken out over the week, so that the mower is only running at night while still cutting each area multiple times a week. I actually had a few comments on my 315X video about how robot lawnmowers don't actually cut grass and are just a scam. So I made sure to record a section of taller grass being cut to show it does actually cut the grass. And I think it might be a good idea to go over the general concept of how robot lawnmowers actually work. They are meant to maintain the grass height by cutting off very tiny chunks of grass. This is meant to allow for the small cuts to break down quickly and return nutrients to the soil. Compared to a normal lawnmower, which is meant to cut no more than one third the length of your grass, to either be bagged or left on the ground, which could turn into thatch over time depending on the type of grass you have. Keep in mind that most robot lawnmowers aren't going to do a very good job of cutting overgrown or too tall grass, so it's important to make sure it's out cutting lawn early enough in the grass cutting season. Likewise, when there is a large amount of rain, your grass will be growing a lot faster, so you may want to make sure the mower is cutting more often to keep up with it. Personally, I found my grass appears to be more healthy by switching to having it cut every couple of days compared to once every week or so. Also something to keep in mind with robot lawnmowers is that they will leave uncut grass next to taller objects like fences or houses. While similar to a regular push mower, the gaps between the blades and the sides of the auto mower are going to be a bit larger compared to a regular push mower. This isn't as big of a deal to me as I had to use the string trimmer after cutting the grass with a push mower anyways, but something you should consider when thinking of getting any robot lawnmower. Another thing to keep in mind is that most robot lawnmowers aren't able to mulch leaves. Not only do they not have enough lift force to pull them up into the blades, but the blades are meant for tiny blades of grass, not leaves. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the Automower 410 IQ. I do wish the price point was a bit lower, but I have no regrets getting it so far. If you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up so that YouTube knows that it should be shared with others. If you aren't already, consider subscribing to the channel and enabling notifications to be one of the first to know when I release other videos just like this one. Thank you for watching, and as always, happy automating!